Individual differences in cognitive biases, evidence against one-factor theory of rationality. In this study, the researchers looked at 234 undergraduate students and measured fluid general intelligence, GF, and crystallized general intelligence, GC. It then gave these students tests for seven kinds of biases. One, anchoring effect, over-reliance on first piece of evidence. Two, belief bias, judging the strength of an argument based on the apparent strength of its conclusion. Three, overconfidence bias, unwarranted confidence in your beliefs, pretty simple. Four, hindsight bias, seeing past events as having been inevitable. And five, base rate neglect. Now this is a bit interesting. It's ignoring general information about a topic in favor of information only pertaining to a special case. Uh, take the following problem. Tom is an opera buff who enjoys touring art museums when on vacation. Growing up, he enjoyed playing chess with family members and friends. Which situation is more likely about Tom? That Tom plays a trumpet for a major symphony orchestra, or that Tom is a farmer? And the answer, of course, is that it's much more likely that Tom is a farmer, given the number of farmers and the number of symphony orchestra trumpet players. Even if you grant very generous multipliers for the probability of Tom being in a symphony orchestra and playing a trumpet based on the listed traits. Let's try another one. James is a tall, athletic black man who is good at basketball. Is he more likely to be an NBA player or work at Wendy's? Right now, in this instance, most people know that even though he's tall enough and perhaps physical enough to be an NBA player, maybe even good enough, he probably isn't. Six. The sunk cost effect, committing uh, to something after investing in it. For example, spending $5,000 on repairs for an old car instead of paying $4,000 for a new car because you've already spent $3,000 on the old car. You could apply this to personal relationships as well. And seven is outcome bias, evaluating the quality of a decision when the, when the outcome of that decision is already known. And so here we have the correlations between the individual's IQ test scores and their scores on various cognitive bias tests. Across the board, the anti-correlation is very weak. In my opinion, it would be unnoticeable in your day-to-day -day interactions, but in some characteristics, people with higher fluid intelligence especially are much less overconfident, but are much more likely to see past the past as having followed an inevitable course. Another thing to consider, though, is that while none of the correlations rise above or below an absolute value of uh, 0 0.4. This is just an overall picture. Who would be more likely to be overconfident? Someone with an IQ of 105 or someone with an IQ of 110? Well, the person with an IQ of 105 would be more likely, but let's not take that prediction too literally. Okay, what about a person uh, with an IQ of 80 and a person with an IQ of 120? For that, I would be more confident that the lower IQ person in this example, with an IQ of 80, would be more likely to be overconfident. But perhaps for here, I'm suffering from overconfidence bias. And perhaps my lack of confidence in the 105 to 110 IQ comparison may be uh, me committing the base rate neglect fallacy. What I would be interested in is odds ratios at any given IQ, or the median level of overconfidence at any given IQ level. I'd also like to compare the levels of overconfidence by race IQ cohorts as well, i.e., who's more likely to be overconfident, a white guy with an IQ of 100 or a black guy with an IQ of 100. But that would, um, unless they miraculously happen to be the same, uh, that would rustle quite a few jimmies, and so I wouldn't hold my breath on that research being done. Until next time, this has been Daily Data. I'm Ryan Falk, and I'll see you next time.